Welcome into another edition of the Stripe Show podcast. It is a froggy Wednesday, and today we are joined by Kramer Hickok, coming off one of the best weeks of golf I can remember in a long, long time. At the, I know it's called the WM Phoenix Open or the Waste Management, but I like to call it the Wasted Management because it <laughs> seems to be an absolute party. And we're going to get into it. I love every second of it, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for giving us your time, Kramer. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, if you, uh, I'm sure you know the name Kramer Hickok. Obviously, you're listening to this, you're a big golf fan. But if you remember, Kramer was in one of the best PGA Tour playoffs I have ever seen. Uh, if you go on YouTube and you search, just search Kramer Hickok, the very first thing that comes up is it is a trim down every single shot from that playoff. And it really was absolutely epic. I, I remember how great it was when it happened last June, but then to watch it again, I watched it this morning. That was absolutely nonstop. I mean, one you, you would drive it in a little bit of trouble. He'd drive yep. it in trouble. You'd both get up and down. He'd hit it close. You'd hit it close. I mean, it was crazy. it had to be unbelievable. It was. It was crazy. I actually went back and watched that, and there was like four or five of the holes. I don't. Even, I don't even remember. Like I just. I went back and I. Some of those putts, I just wanted to see how close they were. Because from my angle, like that 40-footer, it looked like it was right in the middle. And then even on camera, it looked like it was right in the middle. And uh, Must be talking about the second playoff hole. Yeah, on the second playoff hole. Yeah, see, they all run together now. You know, there's eight of them. So I don't, I can't even remember. Uh, but it was just, it was a blur. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I thought the atmosphere was pretty electric. Um, Harris is such a stand-up great guy. Uh, at one point, we just looked at each other, I think, on the seventh playoff hole in the middle of it on the tee box. We said, is someone going to win this thing? Because it was so hard to make birdie on that where that pin was. And it was straight downwind. The second shot was down sloped. It was just about 15, 20 feet. It was about as close as you can get it. So someone was going to have to make a putt. So, But it was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully, next time we get the, the W. Yeah, I mean, there was one hole. Maybe it was the second or the third playoff hole. Both of you made some long putts, and he looked at you and, like, said, hey, man, this is good. Like, he knew it was good stuff. Like, yeah, I love to see a good competitor. I love – I mean, listen, he wants to win. You want to win. But at the same yeah. time, there's respect amongst peers, and it's good to see that happening on the golf course. Well, for sure. I mean, like like I said, Harris is one of the best guys out there. I mean, he's awesome. Um, we got nothing but respect for each other. You're trying to win. You're trying to beat each other's guts out. But at the same time, um, there's there's a level of respect for each other. Um, and you don't want to win by someone else screwing up. And the cool thing about that playoff was that no one blew it. You know, it's not like someone made a bogey, right? Someone won right. with a birdie. We all made putts. There wasn't like a missed putt, you know, and the other guy kind of tapped in or something. It was like someone had to make a putt. And that's why you saw big celebrations. That's why the motions were a high. And, um, you know, unfortunately for me, Harris was the one that made that putt. But, I mean, it was a great, great experience for me to be in. I mean, eight playoff holes, it's a lot of experience. Um, I look forward to taking that, hopefully getting in that position soon and, and capitalizing this time. Speaking of uh, getting in that position, uh, here this weekend, uh, this past weekend at the uh, Waste Management, you played yourself into contention on, I believe it was on Saturday, you were in the top 10, correct? Yeah, I think I was roughly around, yeah, top 20, top 15, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, I didn't quite have it this, last week. I was kind of scraping around, doing the best I could to, to score. And then Sunday, just kind of everything, you know, fell apart. But um, it's it, that place is amazing. I don't know if if, if the golf fans, the, the, the truest, if they like it or not, but I, it was my favorite golf tournament I've ever been a part of. Okay, so that was my question. So... As you know, on Saturday, late Saturday afternoon, Sam Ryder makes a yeah. hole in one. The first one in, I forget, like 2,000 and some odd tee shots. Hadn't been winning in a long time. Yeah. Seven. And place goes absolutely nuts. I mean, it was, and it was a, a spectacle everywhere on social media. Yeah. I know that my social feed was filled with it because I follow a lot of golf stuff, but I saw it on ESPN. Yeah. I saw people that don't really like golf. They knew about it and they were talking about it. So right. to me, it's good for the game. It grows yeah. the game. It puts eyes on our sport. But then I see people online going like, oh, this is not what golf is about. And they sound like old get off my lawn guys. Yeah, no, I I think it's unbelievable for the game of golf. I mean, you had 20,000 people plus there cheering. I mean, it just, it gets the word out. I mean, it makes golf fun again. It's not... Uh, what I, you know, I just think it's cool because it's all over every social media. 
It was all over ESPN. I mean, yeah. the kind of eyes that were on us that week is pretty unusual outside of a major championship week. So, um, I mean, it's great for, for Sam Ryder. I think it, it, it brings a lot of new faces into the game of golf. I mean, I'm sitting there on the range hitting balls after my round, and I heard that roar, and we look over. And there's beer being thrown. And I mean, you could. So you had already gone through there when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. I had already gone through. I'd already finished that round. I think it was probably about, they were probably about an hour after me. Mm-hmm. And uh, you could smell the beer from the range. It was wow. just. But, you know, for us, that's cool because we don't get that experience. You know, right. for, if we have a, a couple thousand people watching, it's it's kind of a big deal. I mean, the players is, is a huge week for us. But I mean, that makes 17 at the players look small. It really, really it really i mean it, it it is really cool i think most of the players like it the players that don't like it look you don't have to play you don't have to go there you don't have to sit through it but i missed the green twice and i got booed like i've never been booed before but i thought it was awesome because i had a wedge in my hand and i'm trying to make hole in one i'm going right at the pin i missed the green i hit a bad shot i got booed that's fine i mean it's one week of the year right so i think i think the truest need to kind of relax look it's one week of the year it's it's great for the game of golf it gets all the eyes on us i think there's over a million people showed up that week it's it's cool so before i get into whether we should should we lean into this and and have some more of this let me ask you how how difficult does it make that tee shot because let's be honest the hole's not that hard i mean it's it's just like like you just mentioned the players Right. PPC 17 is it's a 137 yard hole. It's not hard, but the yep. water being there and that stadium atmosphere does make it harder. So how much harder is 16 at, uh, at, at, at TPC in, in uh, Scottsdale in Phoenix? How yeah, much so, harder is that hole because of the atmosphere? Uh, because of the atmosphere. I mean, I, I would take a 10 handicap and I'd give them 10 balls and I bet they hit the green once in that environment just because look like i have my whoop on i know what my heart rate was i look back it was 160. i mean it's hard to get 160 and i think justin thomas put his up he was 150 and look justin thomas is one of major he's one of the players so he's been through it all right so i mean you're talking about one of the best players in the world he's pumping up there he's sitting there his heart you can't really control it that that kind of um it goes all the way through to your hands it's hard to feel so you're just really just trying to breathe and just hit the best shot possible but under the circumstances, you know you're going to get booed if you hit a bad shot, and you want to make a hole in one so bad, it's easy to get really aggressive. I mean, it's easy to also just play it out to the right and make your three, but no one wants to do that. Everyone wants to make the birdie, make the crowd go nuts. Right. So I told my brother, you know, my brother's an avid golfer. I told him if he had to hit that shot, I, I bet he would probably hit the green. He's a scratch. I bet he hit the green two out of ten. Really? So I, seriously, and, and people don't realize, like, the whole left side of that green falls off into the bunker, and they put the pins on that left side. Right side's fine. It's easy. But um, they did a good job with, you know, that tough – it's it's really not a tough pin, but if you miss the green left, it's falling all the way off. And, and the, the hole that Sam made his ace on, I mean, it was only 124 yards. So – but but the last day is 175 to the back. I think it was 170 to the pin. Um there's really if you miss it left, you're off the green. So it's, it wasn't the easiest shot. So that was that. So which so of the hole in ones, listen, they're both phenomenal. But you're saying that the one that Ortiz made was a little bit more difficult of a shot than the one Sam made. Yeah, absolutely. It's the difference between hitting the little gap wedge and hitting an eight iron, basically, and uh, to the same amount of width of green. Actually, probably less where Ortiz hit it. Um, so his 20,000 fans screaming at you while you're doing it. Yeah. His, and yeah. And, and your backswing, cause a lot of them are drunk and they're, they're, you know, they're excited and they're, they're yelling as you're taking the club back. So you don't know what's going on. <laughs> are you be- almost better off to kind of roll them up and just have them screaming the whole time? I actually thought about doing that. Just kind of raising them up and just tell them just to start screaming. I think Ricky did that a few years ago. I thought about doing that, but I'm like, nah, I'm not, yeah, so, <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> It really is. You know, it is a fun golf hole. Let me ask you, in your opinion, and you obviously talked to many other players, is this something the tour should lean into and maybe we have more than just one of these? Because everybody looks forward to the waste management because of that hole and because of that atmosphere. And we got exactly what we wanted this year. Yeah. And, I mean, we got it with we got it with Sam. We got it with Ortiz. Uh, JT chipped in from off the green, and they started throwing it again. Yeah. So, we got what we wanted a couple times. Is this something that you think, as a player, the tour should lean into, and should we have more of this? I, I 100% agree. I was actually telling my playing partners, Ryan Moore, um, 
And uh, I was telling the guys, I was like, look, we need to have this about, I mean, not every week, but I think we could have it five times, five to 10 times throughout the year. Because, I mean, look, we're all about growing the game. We're, we are entertainers is what we are. I mean, the tour basically tells us you're an entertainer. That's what you get paid for. And um, what better way to entertain? I mean, you're getting all the, you're getting the golf purists that are there on Sunday. Then you're getting all the young guys that are, you know, golf nuts. And then you get the guys that probably aren't even into golf that are showing up just watching us. Right. I think there's a lot of people that don't even know a golf tournament is going on, to be honest with you. But it is it is absolutely great for the game. I mean, I'm all for it. I think it's fun. It, it, it's a change of pace because we we have, I don't know, 40 events out of the year. 39 of them are your normal event. And then mm-hmm. you got the p- players, who's, which is a great – it's a huge tournament. It's great atmosphere. It's fun. They do a great stadium stadium atmosphere. And then you get the waste management, which is kind of your party tournament. But, but look, I mean, you're, you're still getting the best players in the world to show up and play that event. So that means a lot. Are there some places that you could think of off the top of your head that you think that they could kind of have that atmosphere? I feel like not so many years ago at the Honda there around the bear trap, they kind of tried to add that atmosphere. Yeah. And it, it and then they've kind of pulled back from that a little bit. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. They did it. They tried to do it. I think on 17 at Honda, but the problem was it's, it's too hard of a hole. It was, you know, I think at the time it was 180 yards, but, it's straight in the wind. You're hitting a five or six iron. Um, it just doesn't, you need that hole to be short. You need that hole to be electric. It needs to be, you know, you need to be able to see a lot of birdies. You need to be able to like, if you hit a bad shot, look, you can make bogey still, but you want to see a lot of birdies if you're going to have that kind of atmosphere. And I think the Byron Nelson's going to do something similar this year. They're going to do a mini version. Mm-hmm. They're actually going to wrap it around and hopefully have five to 10,000 people on 17. It's about a hundred yard hole. And I, I believe, you know, waste management has always been the first in um, the amount of alcohol consumed by the by the fans. But the old Byron or thrown. <laughs> yeah. But the old Byron Nelson at Lost Cleanness used to be number two. And then since they've gone to Trinity Force, it's dropped dramatically. So now they're bringing this whole um, they're bringing the, the same uh, the fans back at uh, Craig Ranch this year. And you're going to have a similar electric atmosphere, which I think we're all going to love. I just think it's so much fun. Like my, my wife is not a huge golf fanatic. She, you know, she sees it on TV and, and she, I think she pretends to care about it just because she thinks I do Yeah, because she knows I do. So she pretends to care, Yeah, but she was really into that tournament and watching yeah. 16 and seeing what was going to happen. And when she saw the hole in one, she absolutely loved it. And so <laughs> it, it does bring people who don't, generally love the sport it brings them to see that hey it is fun like i i posted on my um on my instagram and actually sam reposted it. sam Ryder reposted it yeah i'm like the next time somebody asks me why i like golf or what's so great about it this all of this that it's, oh, it's not yeah. boring it's fun yeah and i just think that we need more atmosphere like that because there are other entertainment options yeah and so golf's got to have something that causes it to stick out I- i'm gonna watch no matter what the, the right. pga tour is not trying to get me they, they, they've got me hook line and sinker that's exactly we right. need to get the fringe people to watch and i believe that like you said a couple yeah. of more than just one is how we get more people to put eyes on our sport and have fun i think you're 100 percent right because you're always going to have the golf fans watching it doesn't right. matter where or, or when it is but you want to bring the new audience that hopefully you can attach some younger crowds as well and then you bring in that's how you get more people involved and you gotta yeah. gotta appeal to all people and, and one way to do that is have a golf tournament going on but you can also have guys that people fans that don't know much about the sport you bring them in by having an atmosphere like waste management be able to do then you have all the concerts it's just and you know what and look if you don't like it you don't have to play there's another 40 events that you can play that year so it's amen easy. amen yeah. the, you, the pga tour does not make you play that event no I right. love what they've done with the players with the military appreciation concert on Tuesday. Uh, Kelsey Ballerini is the artist this year. And that's always a lot of fun. The Wednesday practice rounds. And then once again, Thursday at 17. Yeah. It, it's so whether you have played TPC Sawgrass or you always go there, you always want to know one thing. What did they do on 17? What did you do on 17? Yeah. And that's, it's, it's made that atmosphere, you know, a ton of fun, but yeah. getting back to yesterday's tournament, it was such a, I, I like the fact that they moved the tee times up to try to get it in before the Super yeah. Bowl started. Obviously, you can't account for a playoff. Um, hated to see what happened at the gala. I mean, that was just absolutely heartbreaking. It looked like he was going to pull it off, but he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we had the playoff, and I was trying to go back and forth between watching the Super Bowl and then watching sure. uh, watching the playoff. 
but yeah. in my opinion, and once again, I'm just a fan and, and, and right. have this, you know, the availability to do a podcast, but I didn't love the playoff to just play 18 over and over and yeah. over and over again. And I, I know why they do it, or I was told they do it because that's where the fans are. Yeah. Yep. But you as a player, don't you think it would be better? I'm not saying you'd even go back to 16, but wouldn't you go play 17? Because that's got that drivable par four yeah. that adds some risk reward. Well, yeah. I mean, I think they did that three years ago because Hideki and, and Webb Simpson were playing. And then I think right. they did 18 twice, and then they went to 17. But you're right. The problem is there's ups and downs, right? I mean, that's a more climactic hole where if you can mm-hmm. you can literally win the hole with a two or you can win it with a four. Right. right? And, and – um, I think the issue is, is like you're saying with the fans, because you get all those fans that are wrapped around. I mean, these guys are paying 25 grand for a day in a box, and then you get all of them horseshoot around the hole, and then you're forcing them to go move. Um, that's the issue with that scenario. But we did it at the flat at the Travelers. I think we played 18, 18, maybe three times, and then we went to 17. But my issue was, why don't we go over to 15? Because 15 was a drivable par four. And you can win the whole. I mean, the, the probably the tournament would have been sided in one hole. So they they got to figure out, I think, a better way to make it just a little bit more climactic. I, I mean, 18 is a great hole. You got the wrap around with all the stands and stuff. But I would actually like to see him just continuously play 16. I thought that would have been amazing. But, you know, the thing is, I understand making it so it's great for the people that are there. But there's way more people watching on television, and they need to make it better for those people. Yeah. And the integrity of the tournament, I just think it would be great if you allowed yeah, the drivable par four, like you said. You can win it with a two, or you can win it with a four if the person drives it in, because that's what happened to Thigala yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you know, when he got to 17. True. I mean, I don't disagree with you. I think you, like, I don't know. You probably had a lot of the fans were leaving to go to the Super Bowl, anyways. You, it, the fans were, it, it, the atmosphere definitely dwindled a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, look, you probably had half the amount of fans on Sunday as you had on Saturday, just because guys are worn out and they're, wow. and, yeah, it felt very minimal, honestly. Um, so you got a lot of fans watching right before they're going to watch the Super Bowl. So I think you're right. You just got to you got to appeal to the big audience, whatever that they're going to like. Um, 18, I think you probably play it twice, and then if it goes three times, you probably go to 17, um, and right. then and then you or you just stay on it, or you just stay on 17. I it, I don't. It's a tough one because I I know how difficult it was for me when I was playing in the Travelers to have to go ride in the cart and go back to all these different holes, and then you, and then by the time you hit your tee shot, there's no fans there. It's just a little bit of a weird feeling. You get up to the green, fans are still coming in, and then you go over to 18 and you have to go back, and then fans are running back. It's just a little bit like kind of wish like okay, everything just stayed where they are. Right. Um, but you want to see the hole that's a little bit more climactic. So there's really probably the best of both worlds to just be seven play 17 over and over again and have the fans get over there. So right, this week had a lot of uh, had a lot of things going on. So we had you know, all the stuff with the with the fans and the and and the waste management going on with the players and the hole of one and all that stuff. But then we had the Charlie Hoffman dust up on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't. I mean, I don't disagree. I mean the. the I don't fully disagree with Charlie on everything he said, but I completely disagree with how he did it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was done the right way. If you, if you, if you're not sure of the rules, I'm not sure that's the first thing you say that I'm not sure. And then go in and, and, and threaten the tour. And then for Bryson and Phil to kind of pile on was surprising as well. Where do you stand on all this? Talk about it. Um, My first thought when I saw that is it's not the best way to handle it. I think there's, there's a better way to do it than going on social media and just calling everyone out like that. That seems like the easy way out. It seems like um, it, it's not the smartest thing to do. I think that's something that you probably send it and, and put it on social media. And then as, as a couple hours past, you kind of say, well, I wish I didn't do that. Right. Um, the easy way or the better way to go about it is just talk to commissioner, talk to the rules officials separately and say, look, we can't have this. Cause it actually happened to Ricky Fowler. Um, I think, two years ago or three years ago on 12 when he dropped it and it was raining and it came back in the water. He ended up winning that tournament, thankfully. Um, but I do agree with Charlie that it's just a terrible rule. It's not, I mean, one, it is your fault. You hit in the water Two, It's not your fault that you have to get penalized again for dropping in the surface. That won't stay. Look, he didn't hit it the second time in the water. And for people who don't know the rule, what happened is he hit it right in the water. It was a big slope that takes it in the water. And he, he went to drop it, ball wouldn't stay, dropped it again, ball wouldn't stay. So the third time, you have to place it. So he placed it on a tuff of grass where he thought the ball would stay. 
goes get gets a yardage, comes back, his ball is rolling in the water. Well, under USGA rules, PJ Tour rules, that counts as a stroke. So he technically hit his drive in the water and his second ball in the water, which is just ridiculous. I mean, why why would he have to get penalized for dropping in on a slope where a ball is not going to stay? Right. And so he ends up making, I think, double in that hole, which take another, you know, it, who knows if that ended up makes a difference, but he had a terrible weekend. I, I saw it's probably just doing having to deal with all the stress going on around all the comments that he said. But I think the issue is with the rule. You got to fix that rule because it's a terrible rule. And I think the PJ Tour actually has to do a better job setting up the golf course where that's not going to happen. All you have to do is grow up the rough there and say, look, we're not going to penalize our players twice for hitting a bad shot. It should only be penalized once because he did hit in the water. Right. So. Are there rumblings going around with certain rulings, things like that? Do players have issues with rules, and is there a way to get those things fixed? Yeah, off the top of my head, that's one of them. Um, you know, another one would be if you are, let's just say if you're on the green, they changed the rule, rule to where if you actually hit the ball, you didn't intend to hit it, you can move it back. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're on the fringe and do the same thing, it counts as a stroke which it just seems a little bit ridiculous. If you're not intending to hit the shot and you move right. the ball a quarter of a millimeter, that counts as a stroke. Right. Um, you're not, I don't, I don't see why that doesn't make sense in my mind. Like why you can penalize for actually hitting a ball. Um, so I think those are just some of them. It, and that goes through what Charlie said. We have a bunch of amateurs governing the rules of golf. I don't, I don't agree or disagree. I think amateurs can know the rules just as well as pros. I just think pros got to be a little bit more involved. And I think all he's trying to do is get the word out. And look like I'm not going to sit here behind the scenes and like let this just keep happening. Um, he's a veteran on the tour. He's just trying to make a difference in the game of golf. Uh, I just think the way he did it was the wrong way. Just going on social media and blasting those guys. Um, and then you have Bryson and Phil is coming in from the bleachers just kind of saying – I agree with you, but those guys are so fed up with the PJ Tour right now anyways that um, I, I think they could kind of, they feel like they could say whatever they want. Now, do, do you believe that anybody is so, quote, fed up with the Tour, as you just said, whether it's Bryson, whether it's Phil, whether it's another player, is anybody really that fed up that you think that we're going to see a major name jump over to this Saudi uh, PIF? Uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of big names jump over there. there. I think there's already been 17 guys that are jumped over and I, and I can't say who they are. Um, but there, there's going to be some big names going over there. Um, look, I mean, from what I've heard, the money's very, very appealing. Um, the, you know, you're only going to have 12 to 14 events. Um, those events are going to have huge purses. Um, you're not going to have to deal with missing a cut anymore. There's only going to be 40 players. So, um, and 10 of those 14 events will be in the States. So uh, signing bonuses, huge, huge, huge purses. Uh, it's going to be very appealing for, for some of these guys. Um, especially, um, I, I would say uh, the issue that we're having on tour right now is, you know, you got the players' purses up to $20 million. Um, The issue that we're having on tour is getting the, the majors to bump up their purses because technically we're getting a small, small piece of the pie. Um, you got the masters. I don't know how much money they're making a, that week, but twelve and a half million dollar purse. Um, it, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say these numbers, but let's just say we're getting a tiny, tiny percentage of the what the PJ Tour is getting of what the total revenue is for all four majors. Wow! So there are some players, some names that will jump, that will be shockingly big names that are going to make the move over. Yeah, you're gonna see. Yeah, you'll see some big names. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, is that something that would interest you, or are you happy here on the PGA Tour, or are you on the fence? No, I'm I'm extremely happy with the PGA Tour. I think what they're doing is great for the look. I'm I have um I have a lot of perspective. I would say, like you know, in college, all I wanted to do is play on the PGA Tour. I wanted to win tournaments. I wanted to to win the Masters. Put on the green jacket. Um, I'm extremely blessed, and I think some of these guys are probably getting a little bit greedy. Um, I. I, I think you have to be thankful and appreciative for the tour. They've given us this platform to be able to chase our dreams and do what we right. would love and make a great living doing it um, to go after a few extra bucks. I mean, 
I think it's it might be a little greedy because you don't know how long that tour is going to be around. You don't know if that money might dry up. You don't know what's going to happen. And if you do leave, you are banned from the tour. The tour has come out and said that. So, so can you not play majors at, at all either? Well, so like the tour is partnered with the British, or with the European tour. So I'd probably cross that out. Um, I, the Masters... I just I don't know yet. They're, they're, they haven't quite figured that out. The tour is a or the the PJ Tour is a huge huge corporation. Uh, they have a lot of power. But as of right now, I think you can probably play three of the majors. And if you couldn't play the majors, I think you're not going to see as many people going over. If you could play the majors, and you're going to get all the money. I think you're going to see a lot more guys going over. Now, do you know when that when these decisions will be made public, or when we'll know who's going and who's not? Uh, it's, the word is that the tour is going to start in June. So you're going to start seeing the stuff, you know, you're going to start seeing these name changes in, in, in the springtime. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's soon. So very soon, very soon. A lot of these guys are signed NDAs and, but a lot of these guys, I mean, you're seeing these guys signing at tournaments and getting a huge amount of money wired to their bank account the next day. Do you think, is there anything specific in your opinion that you've heard in talking to players, being in the locker rooms and understanding what's going on? Is there anything specific or is it all just money that's making people make the jump or want to make the jump or think about making the jump? I think we're starting to realize how money hungry these, a lot of players on the PJ tour are because a lot of it is just money. Um, I think there's, there's pros and cons. The pros are the money. The pros are less events. The cons are, you don't really know who you're getting in bed with here. I mean, it's Saudi back right. money. You don't, uh, big corporations have come out and spoken that we don't do deals with the Saudis because they don't pay. And if you try and tame the court, what do they care? Right. So you're going to have a lot of these guys. So let's just say you're Phil Mickelson and you're sponsored by Workday. Well, Workday is not going to sponsor you anymore. Right. And they've out and already made that clear. So they're not going to, they're not going to do that. Um, so that's, that's one of the downsides is and if you think the tour owns you now well i think it would it would be 10x that if you want to if the prince of whatever wants to take you to dinner and you don't want to go well it's you might be off that tour um and so but there's ways around it i think this is putting good pressure on the pj tour to uh be proactive instead of reactive to this um these six circumstances I mean, the players purse has already gone up i think if you can get the major purses to keep going up and um, if you can get the majors to be at 20 million minimum, and then if you can get the the regular purses throughout the rest of the year, be up to 10, I think you're going to see a lot of guys staying. I think you're going right. to see more and more guys staying as the money stays. You're, you're safe over here. You know you're not going anywhere. Look, who knows? I mean, you could be playing over in um, Saudi Arabia, the prince of uh, Saudi Arabia. You could get sick of it. You could get bored with golf, and all of a sudden, the tour is done. You, right. just, you don't know the ramifications of right. it. And, so and you can't come back to the PGA Tour. You can't come back. You're done. And we all um, – I don't know if you're allowed to keep your um, retirement money or not. I think you are allowed to keep it. But that's also a big thing you got to think about as well. Right. It's going to – I tell you, it's going to be really interesting. I didn't realize that it was going to happen um, as soon as June. So we really are about to have some uh, some groundbreaking movements going on. But it's, you know, it's all competition for the tour. Yep. Me, personally, I love what the PGA Tour does. Of course, there's always – little things here and there that could always get better, but yeah. I'm not buying that when, when Charlie posts on Instagram, that this is why people are looking at the Saudi. I don't, I don't think that the, the rules infraction, that's not enough to make people jump ship. No, I think it's more what he was saying is, you know, like see Bryson's come out and, and, and said the same thing Bryce or that Charlie said is that like the tour, um, they don't care about you, which is totally false. The tour, cares about their players i mean right. so much so that we have some of the best insurance policies retirement uh policies of any sport i think the tour um the tour needs us just as much as we need them um uh i i don't i don't agree with that at all i think it's more a, mo a big money grab for most of these guys i mean look, they stick a big wad of cash in front of your face and dangle in front of your face it's it's very hard for some of these guys to say no especially if you're towards the end of your career i don't if you're right. towards your career, I don't see why you wouldn't go, honestly. So yeah, I mean, it was rumored that Bryson was offered more money to go than Tiger has made in his yeah. entire career PGA Tour winnings. Obviously, it has nothing to do with his sponsorship dollars and all that stuff. That's right. money's astronomical. But just winnings on the golf course, 
the rumor <laughs> was that Bryson was offered a greater amount of money yeah. to just go. Yeah. That's life changing money. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know those numbers for what they are. I know that the report came out, said that it was a hundred, um, hundred, I think it was a hundred million. He said wrong. He said it, that's not true. Right. Then, Which means it could be 150 million. Like who knows? Exactly. <laughs> and then another report came out. It said it was 230 million. I, I have no clue. But right. all I, I, I do know that Bryson is unhappy with the tour. He's been vocal enough to say that. I'm not spreading rumors. I, he has vocally right. said that. Um, and I, Phil Mickelson also came out and said the same thing. So, Which so, I don't get. Phil's had, I mean, the, the PGA Tour has made Phil Mickelson a very wealthy man. I agree. And, and that's why I said I think a lot of this comes down to just a money grab and some greed because it, it, for me, it's all about perspective. I'm here playing golf. I'm doing what I love to do for a living. I'm making money doing it. I don't see... <laughs> why you have any reason to be upset like i think if some of these guys would just say hey look look back when you're 18 years old in college and had no money and now you're flying private and you're playing <laughs> golf for a living i mean <laughs> don't you think you'd be pretty happy so, can you say that a little louder for the people in the back please because yeah. <laughs> you need to preach you're exactly <laughs> right i mean it's right? i agree with you but we'll see what happens uh, it is going to be shocking like you said so you said there are 17 guys right now that are going some of yeah. them are big names that we will be surprised at, like, whoa. Yeah, rumor to have going. I mean, these are the, the things that I hear players talking about. Yeah. Right. So, I don't, obviously, oh. I don't know for sure. But right. uh, but we'll find out soon. We will find out soon, yeah. We will find out soon. We'll find out soon. Getting back to your playoff uh, at the uh, at the, at the Travelers, eight hole playoff, did you learn anything during that playoff that you will be able to use the next time you're in that situation that you would do differently? For sure. So I think the the first time I ever thought about being in contention, I, I thought I would be a lot more nervous. I thought I, would, I didn't know how I was going to handle the pressure. I thought the travelers, I handled the pressure really well. I thought my my feel, I think a lot of people talk about, well, when you're under pressure, you, you kind of lose that sense of feeling in your hands. You think about speed. A lot of people leave putt shorts. My speed was great. I hit good right. shots. I was way more relaxed than I ever thought I would be. I was just kind of having fun and in the moment. Um, but those nine playoff holes, a lot of guys will never play nine playoff holes in their career. And I was able to play them in one tournament. So each one of those events or each one of those holes, you can count as like a playoff event, really. So um, there's I think I went into the understanding that par might be able to get a win. And it's just really I mean, you're playing another guy who's at the top of his game. You're at the top of his game. If you think he's not going to make the putt, you're wrong. He's going to make the putt. You just really got to expect anything to happen. Like Harris is plugged in the bunker. I thought I made my putt, but I didn't really yeah. think up and down. I really didn't. I thought the no. best it was 15 feet, but you got to expect him to hold it, honestly. Um, and so I, I, I would say that stuff. So the next time I am in that scenario, I think I'll be very confident because I was able to – you know, like I said earlier, no one lost it. I was able to make some cool putts, and, and I'll be able to look back on that for sure. Yeah, I mean, that second playoff putt, it honestly looked like it was dead in the center of the cup. Had I had somebody stopped that putt a, three inches out and said, okay, yeah, right now, $100, <laughs> is that going in or not going in? Yeah. I, I would have said, you know what, I'll give you $500 It's going yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. I still don't know how it stayed I, out. I, I mean, like I said, I, I just watched it again. And the uh, and the same thing with the fifth playoff hole putt. It looked like that putt had to go break yeah. down to the left, and it just it just hung out the whole time. It was crazy. Like the first forty footer, that was the same uh, hole that Harris had put in the bunker on. So mm -hmm. I'm yeah. trying to get it down there and, and nosy it down there. I'm not trying to make that forty footer. I'm just really just trying to two putt because I think Par has got a chance of winning. Right. And so with three feet out, I started kind of doing like a little tiger walk off. Cause I yeah. thought that it was right in the middle. It was breaking right. And then all of a sudden two feet to, to go, it goes straight left. It did. I'm like, what in the world? And it kind of does a mini horseshoe. And then on the fifth playoff hole, I had past champions of that event. I had, I had past players say that putt always breaks. It always breaks. And for, for you, it didn't. Um, what it came up is just a, this might sound absurd to some of the viewers, but a little gust of wind came up off the left, and the greens were so baked out, so that ball could just it just won't it won't go, and so it, it's just crazy like the the timing and and it, the way it comes down to the millimeters, or you know it could change you know if you winning or losing. Yeah, I mean the shot you hit in on that fifth playoff hole, it looked like you blew it right. It looked like it was going to miss the green I, out to the right. 
Yeah, I did. I pushed it. Oh, so you didn't mean to hit it over there. Oh, no. I mean, that landed. I, I probably pushed that like seven yards right, but it wrapped around. So It <laughs> did. It gets up on that top tier. It wraps back around to the left, and it feeds down to the hole. And the guys yeah. on TV are like, wow, what an amazing shot. And I'm like, it, yeah. it looked like you pushed it. But I'm like, hey, maybe he didn't. Maybe that's exactly what he knew no, what it was going to do. That was a dead push. But <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, you know what? Sometimes you're better to be lucky than good. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so this week you are, uh, are you playing the Genesis? Yes, we're playing the Genesis Riviera, so LA Open, um, one of my favorite events of the year. It was my favorite event of the year um, until I played. This is my first time playing Scottsdale Waste Management, and that took the took the icing on the cake. So um, that was the winner for sure. But I'm looking forward to this week because, I mean, what a great golf course we're about to play. Um, I don't know if we're having as many fans out with California restrictions. I mean, obviously not well, as much. Did you fun. watch the Super Bowl Sunday? I didn't look like any restrictions yeah. there. Everything looked like it was going back That's to normal. True. But I know we do have no fans allowed during practice rounds. So, which is That's a little, that. That, that's kind of back to old COVID rules. And, it and no it, sense. it's like, it's, it's, just, yeah, it's a little double standard, but it makes no sense. But regardless, the fans will, it will feel very underwhelming, I, I'm assuming, compared to last week. Oh, I'm sure. That's, it's got to be hard to come off of that. Yeah. Now, do you, are there a lot of fans on the rest of the golf course there in Scottsdale? Because I I know the the numbers, the sheer numbers are like Saturday. I think is the most attended golf tournament of any golf tournament on the PGA Tour by far. Wow. Uh, are there a lot of plant? Are there a lot of fans on other holes, or is it mostly you know, yeah. 16, 17, 18? You know, if you, the league groups, you got the last three groups. You got a lot of the golf purists watching those guys. Um, mm -hmm. The golf fans, you get John Rahm fans, Scotty Scheffler fans. Those guys will go out and watch, but. There's just a big gap between those guys, let's just say number hole number four through hole number 14, where it just seems like there's no one there. Um, I will say number two, they did a great job, or sorry, number 12, the par three, they lined the whole right side with fans. Uh, but it's just kind of like these little pods where you got the first three holes, there's groups just following those guys, and then you got 12, and then you got really 16, 17, 18. And 16, 17, 18, I feel like has probably – I don't know, 80% of the fans on those three, three holes. So wow. it, it's a cool, it really is a cool finish. I know how much some of these guys are paying or corporate companies are paying for some of these boxes and, but they got TVs, they got chandeliers, they got, I mean, leather couches. I yeah, mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. It ain't what it used to be. It used to be four tent poles on a tarp. It's not like that anymore, man. It's <laughs> totally different now. Totally different. It's yeah. totally different. So uh, how, how's your game right now? What shapes your game in? Oh, it's actually pretty good. It might not have looked like it last week. Um, it's you know I took uh, I took a few weeks off and went skiing and got some rest because I don't like playing Farmers or or Pebble Beach. I love those events, but they don't love me. I don't play well there. Um, so I, I shook a little bit of the rust off last week. I feel like I'm turning in the right direction. My caddy was saying, "Dude, you're low, you're due for a low one. You're due for a low one," and I really felt I was. Um, but uh, you know, I, it's the first uh, first week of a. I think I'm playing five in the next six weeks. So I got a oh, lot wow. of. So I'm going to play L.A., then I'm going to play um, Honda, take the Arnold Palmer off, and then play the players. And then um, I think Valspar, and then I don't yeah. know that. So you got a lot of golf coming up. So It is. We get a real Florida swing this year now that they've kind of got the schedule back yeah. uh, to the way that it used to be. So, yes, yeah, so we've got some uh, – got some big ballparks coming up too. The Honda – Honda's yeah. a big ballpark, and the wind's usually blowing. Yeah, I that is, that is actually one of my favorite tournaments of the year. I don't know why, but I always – I think this is the Bermuda grass. I grew up on it in Texas. I grew up with water all over the golf course in Texas. I grew up with the wind in Texas. Um, for me, I'm very, very comfortable there. I, it's, I, I probably play, I think, the best golf there for whatever reason. It's one of those – there's weeks on tour where you feel like you're playing well. You look up at the leaderboard, and you're like 45th place. And then there's weeks on tour where you feel like you have your C game. You look up at your fifth. That's one of those weeks that I look up, and I'm like, wow, I don't feel like I'm playing that well, but – I must be so it that's those good. are those are the fun weeks i must uh, that's probably how tiger felt every every week but right you know so. exactly you um you did some uh some video work with uh travis one of my uh hosts here on the uh the stretch yeah. show podcast you guys did some work out of pga west i believe yeah that's right they uh asked me to um do a little segment on the range where i was just kind of walking through my swing thoughts i was walking through how i hit cut shots draws uh, just basically the mental side of the game and, and how I work myself around the golf course. And I thought it was really cool. So um, it was pretty interesting. I think I, my swing thoughts are way different than other players. I think about shaking someone's hand in the backswing. Then I think about holding a pizza tray. 
uh, I thought they thought that was kind of funny, but it's it's funny when you talk to players about their swing thoughts because they're all different. But yeah, I think about holding the pizza tray at the top and it get, gets the club face right in the right spot at the top. Right. It's fire down. So. So what do you mean by shaking someone's hand in the backswing? Yeah. So I like like this right hand. If I just if someone was to my right, uh -huh. I just reach out as far as I can and shake their hand. And what that does is just give me some width so where right. I can, and then it sets the club in the right spot where. I'm not going to have my hand down because the face is going to be shut. I'm going to feel like I'm shaking it, right? So and then from there, I just feel like I hold the pizza tray, and it just sets everything perfectly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So whatever I, works, man. Hey. Yeah, whatever works. So whatever I works. I'm like a Instagram video, and I'm like, let me try that, and I loved it, and I've been playing actually really good with that swing thought for now for the last two months. So I'm going to keep doing it. Oh wow! So you saw it on Instagram. <laughs> saw it on Instagram. <laughs> that's amazing yeah yeah that's so cool i don't feel like the, but see it's working yeah. for you though i've been watching instagram videos for a long time it's not working that well for me so i'm glad you figured it out i'm a total golf nerd though so i like i'll just study i love studying the game i love like looking at golf videos and i just came across this video i've been kind of struggling with i'd get laid off and i get across the line and then i just like this guy's like well just hold the pizza i'm like okay i'll hold the pizza and it just got to the same spot every time i'm like you gotta be kidding me I've been playing this game for professionally now for seven years and my whole life, really. And I never thought about holding a pizza. That's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So then you know, I'm not, I'm not going to quit on my, on my, uh, quest. Exactly. It's my golf swing through Instagram. Exactly. You might find something. Well, Kramer, before you let you, uh, let you go, we do a, a quick thing here called the emergency nine. I'm going to ask you nine quick questions. Some of them are about golf. Some of them have nothing to do with golf. Okay. And, uh, we'll go question number one. What was your favorite commercial on the Super Bowl Sunday night? uh i didn't i didn't really i didn't watch it sorry because i was in the car i was driving oh. i'm a, every time a uh, commercial come off i would shut it off and <laughs> I could look at the directions so <laughs> okay fair enough sorry. uh when you uh when you're binge watching television you a netflix or youtube guy studying golf swings uh netflix mostly yeah netflix probably watching yellowstone i think finishing up on yellowstone right now okay yeah. uh music on the golf course or no go absolutely and what's your music of choice on the golf course i like kygo um i like i mean it just depends on what the mood is if you're with the boys let's play some some kygo if you're not if you're just chilling let's play some country music yes all right good i'm in i'm, I'm all in on the country i played uh tpc sawgrass with luke yeah. bryan and cole swindell last year oh man we had a blast those guys are amazing they are such good dudes we had so much fun awesome. uh this thing you've ever heard or seen from a fan you say weirdest thing dumbest Dumbest thing, I saw a guy, I was playing the practice round waste management, I think it was two years ago, I wasn't in the event, but I saw a guy take off his prosthetic leg, put a beer in it, and chug it. <laughs> so, that was in the practice round too, so. Who says they're not having fun in, in Scottsdale? <laughs> uh, number five, player you'd most be nervous to be paired with? Uh, I think that's easy. Tiger Woods. I played in front of him and I played behind him and I was nervous playing in front of him and behind him. So I'm sure I'd be nervous playing with him. Uh, if you weren't a pro golfer, what would Kramer Hickok be doing? I would be, um, buying and selling real estate. Okay. That's not, Hey, that's not, that's not bad either. Yeah. Um, most famous number in your, uh, cell phone. Most famous number. Um, who? Let's see. I'm trying to think of non golfers. I mean, I I don't have Tiger's number. I don't have Rory's, but I got Dustin Johnson. Okay, um, I count. Yeah, yeah. I count. Dustin Johnson counts. You yeah. got Brooks. I got Brooks's number. Yeah, see, yeah. there you go. See, you're yeah. doing good. I love how you went Tiger, then yeah. Rory, and then you're like, but I got these guys. So there are <laughs> different levels of numbers. Obviously, Tiger's at the top for sure. <laughs> um. What is the one chore that's always waiting for you when you get home? Laundry. Laundry. Okay. That seems laundry. to be the that, that seems that, to be the key answer usually. Yeah. Today's a laundry day. Monday <laughs> in between events. And what's your go-to meal on the road? Uh anything healthy, probably Chipotle. Just trying to get something healthy. Flower child. I I need to eat healthy if, if I want to feel good the next day. It's a big part of my my diet. Wow, good deal. Well, man, good luck to you. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck at the Genesis this week. Good luck at the Honda. Then you get that week off. And uh, how, how soon will you get here to Ponte Vedra? Will you, will you come here during the during the API week? Yeah, so I'll come over. I'll fly back during API, and then I'll come over probably Sunday night. Get, oh, that's get, cool. 
but we'll get some get some work in Monday morning with my coach, then get dialed in, get ready to go for that event. It's one of my favorite ones of the year. Yeah, we love the players. Players is great. Uh, we have the Tuesday night military appreciation show. Yep. And uh, and then Wednesday's practice rounds, and then Thursday. You, you I, I like the move back to March because uh, it's not so hot. I do too. I think I, I think the players like it as well. It's not as hot. I think the golf course is actually set up better. It looks better on television. It's a lot greener. Um, yeah. The greens, you know, I, they were dealing with the greens being a little burnt out before. And now they're great. So yeah. the best it'll book. be beautiful. Well, good luck this week at the Genesis, man. Hope you get a W. Thanks, Froggy. Appreciate it for having. Thank, thank you. you uh, thank you so much for your time. We'll talk to you soon. And next, we'll talk to you next week. We've got Brandel Chambly, who is never short of an opinion so brando will be here on the stripe show next wednesday we'll have him the week of the honda so thanks so much for listening to the stripe show podcast